Hey guys, Lord Darren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God, back with you with the next video in my Pentiment playthrough. Today, after following uh, the gentleman from last week's video, we are now here after leaving the old salt mine. Let's talk to Veronica. Veronica. Hi, Andreas. Brigitte. Veronica, no! You can see us! We'll say afternoon, girls. Veronica, are you here for a swim too? Andreas, we don't do much swimming in Nuremberg. In fact, I never learned how. Or, I don't think Franz and Johan would appreciate me joining you. We'll say the same. Veronica, heh, probably not. Brigitte, oh my god, don't invite him in. Veronica, don't worry, Brigitte, he won't do anything weird. You won't do anything weird, right? Um, we obviously want to leave. We can continue the conversation for now. I was out for a walk. I didn't even know you two were here. So you said, well, we are. And you shouldn't be. Veronica, we should be getting back for dinner, actually. Mom will be wondering where I am. So you said, I'm not getting out with him here. Andreas, I s oh, I see your dilemma. I'll go. Veronica, it's fine. It's not. Franz is going to be so mad. Veronica, have a good dinner, Andreas. The waterfall must flow down from the snow melt in the mountains above the abbey. Look at the shrine of Saint Satya. Andres, a carving of Saint Satya. It looks quite old. Still not much else here. It's meal hours, so I should probably find somewhere to eat. Let's head to the town and see if someone will eat with us. Drucker House. Andreas, what brings you to the shop? Can I fix you something? You know I love your cooking, Marie, but perhaps another time. Marie, don't keep me waiting, Andres, until later. Plus, good morning, Andres. Do you want? Good day, Lucky. Do you have a moment to talk? To make it quick. Let's say I was wondering if I might break bread with you and Agnes. We've never shared a meal. Lucky, you have a lot of nerve asking me after what you did. Andreas, look, somebody killed the Baron. I know it wasn't my friend. I don't expect you what you want me to do. So no, I didn't actually make it fail. I just failed. Lucky, keep your nose where it belongs, Miller. I don't want to talk to you, understand? Get out of here now. Until late. Go! Agnes. Andreas. Good day, Andreas. Did you need something? Uh, let's not ask her to share him. That's pretty behind his back. Not just now. Be well, Agnes. How do we get out of here? You know, classic technique like. Like, uh, uh, when I was in my formative years, like, if one of my parents said, like, no to something, you ask the other one, it's probably not what we should do in this case, right? So, let's see, uh, Alban Bakery, maybe? North Town? Town Commons, I think. 
Let's ask Andres if he wants to eat. Hello, Andres. Good morning, Andres. So, Otto and Eva, huh? Yes, what about them? How is their courtship developing? Doing fine, you think? Or, come now, tell me the juicy details about what's going on between them. I'm not a gossip, Andres. Besides, aren't there more crushing issues at hand with the death of the Abbey? I'm just curious. It doesn't mean I'll ignore all other events around me. Maybe it's sealed. Or I do not ask this to pour water onto the rumor mill, but for the concern I have for the happiness of my friends. Endress? Of course, Endress. Fancy talk for being nosy. Well, if you ask me, I think Otto's being a bit too slow about Andreas old. Andres, he's old enough already not to be smiting like a boy. They both like each other. Seems to me if you found the right person, you should go for it. It's what I would do. Andres, what stopped you? Or where is Mr. Sch Schmitten, if I may ask? Um, Andres, Andres, um, well, uh, that's personal. Andres, you can trust me, Andres, aren't we friends? Andres, that's what goss the gossipers always say. But we are friends, I can't deny that. I do hope to find someone to have at my side if we build a family. God has not given me this blessing. Andres, worry not. It could happen any moment, Andres. Andres, it may not be as remarkable as people say. Andres, one hopes so. Also, I must get back to work, Andres. Enough talk. Andres, until later. We'll have to watch out for that, because we don't want to be called a gossip or nothing, so... You see Merman House? Let's, uh, let's talk with old Otto. He was with Lucky. Andreas, can you do dinner with me and Otto? I'd like them, thank you. The old Otto, good. I could eat a horse. Otto, bless us, O oh Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from our bounty. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 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 Otto, how are you feeling today, Dad? Old Otto. Hand's been killing me. Back's been killing me. Goddamn knee's been killing me. You want some advice, boys? Then get old. Andres, I hope you find some relief soon, old Otto. Old Otto, only relief coming my way is death. I suspect. A farmer's fate ages beyond your you ages you beyond your years. A farmer's fate. Just look at my boy here. Works too hard he does, but what choice does he have? Out of none. With the abbot breathing down my neck. I tell you, he wants me to replace the roof on his house next. Andres, didn't you just replace the one on the scriptorium? Is that why you were felling wood in the forest? Out of, yeah. And I made a mess of my shoulder doing it. The way that bastard Gurnall orders me around, you think I'm one of his little monks. Old Otto, he works you like a dog and says it's for the glory of the Lord. It's not right. Andreas, but the work does need to be done, and Otto's the only carpenter in town. Well, it's not, I agree. Well, you should be glad the abbot values your work. It reduces your tax burden. I'll say the third one. Easy enough for you to say when it's my work that keeps you warm when you're scribbling away in that scriptorium. Apologies, that was not Christian of me to put that on you, but neither am I wrong. Old Otto, the abbot's bad, but the miller might be worse. That shithead Leinhardt's been screwing us for years with his toe. Andreas, doesn't he need to make a living too? Andreas, I've never spoken to him. Is he really so bad? Let's, uh, let's, let's say the first one. Otto, he doesn't have to bleed us dry to do it. Imagine your only income for the year was what wheat you could grow in the summer, and the miller determines how much it costs you to grind it to flour. What if you have a poor season? What if the miller raises his toe? What if everyone has a great season, and there's too much goddamn flour to make any money with it? The farmers are at the mercy of the weather, the church, and the miller. Two of those are beyond their power to influence. But the miller is their neighbor. He sees them struggle. He should help them. Uh, not, but li not Leinhardt's miller. He only takes more. Andreas, fine, but I hadn't considered it like that or say nothing. Well, 
Oh God, uh, Lord willing or God willing, Lenhart will meet justice in this life or the next. <laughs> Andreas, I suspect I know which Otto prefers. Ah, you accusing me of unchristian behavior, Master Miller. Oh God, uh, Otto, more pleasant pastures, eh? You see any of those nuns when you were working, Otto? Otto, death. Old Otto, I remember that Cecilia woman being pleasant to look at back when I worked up there. Andreas, do you pay much attention to the nuns, Old Otto? Or Mother Cecilia would not appreciate being spoken about that way. Old Otto, oh, I pay attention to everything now that I can't work. Lots to see in the world, like nuns. Andreas, Mother Cecilia would not appreciate being spoken about that way, or say nothing. Other pretty sisters up there as well. Sometimes they catch the wrong man's eye. Shame what happened to the one a while back. Glad she came back though. Now I'm glad I said nothing because it would have probably alienated him from this. Andreas, what happened? Which sister? Old Otto, Oxen Otto. It's a sad story and not our place to share. Least of all because we don't have the details. Mother Cecilia would know. Not that she's likely to tell you. Old Otto. Handsome woman, Cecilia. Bet that big veil of hers is full of secrets. Andres, she hinted that the Baron had hurt one of the sisters years ago. She wouldn't tell me anything else. Otto, that figures. She probably doesn't want any of the Abbey's dirty secrets getting out into the world. Andres, I think she knows something about the Baron's death. She keeps a keen eye over that Abbey, that's for certain. Not much happens there that, does sh that she doesn't know about. Otto. Now, if you want to hear all of this little, all of Tassing's little secrets, you should go to the spinning bee. Old Otto. Ugh. That gaggle? You can hear them cackling from here. Andreas. The what? Otto. Where the women spin wool. Talk to the Gertners, the Johann Bars, or Cat. They'll tell you when to come by. Old Otto. Hey, son, I need to lay down. Why don't you say goodbye to your friend here? Otto, sorry, Andreas. The old man needs his rest. Andreas, of course, thank you for having me. Sure, of course. Time to get back to work. And I know just where we're going to go. We're going to head to the Gardner house and talk about those women and see if that gives us a different lead. Peter and Big York are here. Andres? Big York. Hey, Andres. Can you say hello to the girls today? Andres, Eva and Clara. Big York. No, I mean the chickens. Peter, James, and John. They like it when you stroke their back or give them a good scratch under the breast. Andres, you named your chickens after the past the past the apostles. We can say two things. We could say, isn't that blasphemy? Or, you better not let Father Thomas know. That's beyond sacrilegious. Big York. Clara said the same thing. She thinks I'm being irre irreverent. <laughs> but Peter, James, and John witnessed greatest moments of glory. Witnessed Jesus' greatest moments of glory and his darkest trials. And I was thinking, that's how it is with the girls and me. They see everything I deal with around here. Andreas. That makes perfect sense to me, Big York. You have much in common with Christ. Word of advice, don't mention that to anyone else, especially the Father. Big York, it's fine, I get it. I'll just call them the girls from now on. Andreas, I don't recall your family eating eggs. What do you do with all of them? Big York, oh, we sell them to the Bowers. Clara says... We need the extra money for tasks, tasks. Anyway, I should get back to it. Until later, Andres. Andres, until then. Clara. Hello, Andres. It's nice to see you out and about. Afternoon, Clara. Keeping busy. Or, oh, it's afternoon already. I lost track of the day. 
cloud always. If it's not washing, it's the cooking, the mending, the tidying. Uh, I'll lose my head if I count it all. And that's before we get to the wool. Ah, goodness, all that wool. Andreas, wool? Clara, we sure they use last week to prepare for the lambing. You remember the bleeding? I'm sure. How could you, you forget? My ears are still ringing. Now the wool is all washed, and we've got a pile of spinning to get through before the lambs are born. Ah, where will we find the, tim the time? Andreas, who does the spinning? You? Or, that sounds like a lot of work. Surely you have some help. Clara, goodness, no. It's too much work for one woman to bear. All the women, but Jim. Many hands make light work, huh? Andres, even baby Ursula. Or, do you enjoy it? You have so many sheep, it sounds laborious. Or, how do you determine the profits, but if everyone shares in the labor? Clara, you're a funny one, Andres. We share in the work, and we share in the rewards. The wool we spin will clothe the town through the Alpine winters, after all. But each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others, as Father Thomas said last Sunday. Andreas, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, I remember Father Thomas being fond of that sermon. Or, oh right, Mass. Father Thomas has been pursuing to me to attend. Clara, how many times has he given it since you've come here? Andreas, uh, God, it must be three or four by now, or I've stopped keeping count for the sake of my sanity. Well, I don't... I hope you don't let the Father's lesson stop you from attending, Andreas. It would make me happy to see you at Mass, in Mass, and I know it would please Eva as well. She worries for you in your immortal soul. God bless her. Andreas, she does. My immortal soul is fine, thank you. I say she does. Yeah. Of course, Father, of course. She worries about all of them. And so long as you stay with us, family, you shall be. Ah, but I'm looking forward to the spinning. It's rare so many of the women in town are in the same room together. Oh, Andres, you should come by. I'll say, I like that, thank you. Clara, everyone will be glad to see you, I'm sure. We made at Johann Bauer's house. Please come by in the morning or afternoon and speak to Johann. I should get back to my labors. But it was lovely to see you, Andres. Take care. Be well, Clara. It'll be fun to have you spinning with us, Andreas. <coughs> Johan's family keeps beehives for the honey and wax. Hans. Hans, hey, Andreas. Andreas. How's it going, Hans? Keeping busy in the fields. Hans, I guess. Andreas, do you like it? Hans, what? Andreas, farming. Hans, I never really thought about it. Dad says it has to get done whether I like it or not. Andreas, what do you think about that? Hans, Uncle Franz said Brigitte might come help with the, the laundry today. Andreas, she's Martin's wife, right? She seems nice. Hans, she is. Nicer than Veronica, anyway. I wish Brigitta lived here instead of her. Andres, well, you have a good time thinking about your cousin's wife. I'll say nothing. Until later, Hans. Uh, bye. Hedy and Veronica? Talk to Veronica. I'll see you at the spinning bee, Andres. I better see that skinny bottom of yours at the bee, Andres. Johan. And Johan, Andreas, I was wondering when you turn up. The gaggle said you'd come to watch them spin. Between you and me, Eddie's not about to let you go once she's out, once she's got you in her claws. So I hope you've got a few hours to hunker down and get comfortable. Andreas, I'm happy to spare a few hours, or I don't have the time just now, maybe another day. Let's go ahead. Johan, Hedy will be glad to hear it. She's got a fondness for you. Heaven knows why. Now, I can't let you inside among the unmarried girls being unmarried yourself. But you're welcome to watch through one of the windows. You don't need to worry about me, Johan. Good. Nothing matters more for a young woman than her reputation. And Eva and Veronica won't be getting a poor one on my watch. 
Eddie. That idiot did never see trouble. He didn't want to jump in feet first. Veronica, we don't think he has gone to Innsbruck. Andres, who are we talking about? Or keep listening, keep listening. Eddie, God, Lord no. Innsbruck's got to be small time to that little shit now. Clara, you think he has something more exciting in mind? It's a big world. Perhaps he intends to explore it or escape. That nobleman was just murdered up at the Abbey. Eva, Martin picked an awfully convenient time to run off. Oh Lord. Andreas was friends with the nobleman. Do you think Martin could have, you know, What motivation could Martin have possibly had, or... I'm not ruling anyone out just yet, or... I don't think this is appropriate for me to discuss. Clara, it's not our place to say... Eddie, Martin has a nasty little habit. Okay, he's gotten better. Johan, once a thief, always a thief, I say. Andreas, I saw Martin running away from the Abbey the morning Lorenz was killed. Or, I don't think this is appropriate for me to discuss. Say the first one. God, no! Eva, Martin might be a thief, but I don't think he is a murderer. He's a coward at heart. Clara, you think it takes a brave man to commit a murder? Johan, not a brave man, but a bold one. And Martin is not that. Hedy, he's your problem, Cat. What do you think? Could he have killed that man? Cat. Veronica, Mom! Johan, this is a matter best... Left to the proper authorities, not a spitting bee. Imagine being tried by a gaggle of peasant women. Eva, that's unkind, Johan. Johan, it's the truth, isn't it? Doesn't matter if it hurts your feelings. Andreas, she's right, Johan, you're being unfair. Johan, remind me, Andreas, whose house are we in? Eddie, oh, lay off him, Johan. Jesus. Andreas, if you're just going to stand around, how about I put you to work? Johan, if you're going to gossip with the girls, you might as well spin with them, too. How does this work? Then you draft the wool from the distaff and twist it tight, then spin the tight yarn onto the spindle. Once there's enough yarn on the spindle, collect it at the bottom and begin again. Draft, twist, spin, collect, repeat. You'll figure it out. Do you know, I took Ursula to play with Gret's daughter the other day, and there was a strange man in the bakery. Johan, was he polite to you? I can't believe Ulrich, Ulrich would stand for anything less. Emma, he was very reserved. Dark squint, quite tall, and wearing a tunic. Clark, he liked the rye bread, I remember. Hedy, who is this man? Why am I just now hearing about this? Cat, I believe he is staying at the Abbey. Veronica, that must be Brother Sebhat. Brigitta and I saw him walking up there after visiting the shops. He seemed lost. Hedy, where is he from? Does he speak German? God, I hate being the last to know. Christ, I hate being the last to know. I saw Big Yorg talking to that nun again. The young one? Johan. Heh, who can blame him? Eddie. God damn it, Johan. Heh, <laughs> Johan. <laughs> Clara. He knows she's trouble. I told him to stay away. 
Veronica. She's very pretty, isn't she? In a mean way. Clara, pretty, perhaps, but a nun all the same. He knows better. Eva, when has that ever stopped Big York from doing anything? Hey, we have plenty of pretty girls here in town. My Veronica's not half bad. Veronica, mom! Johan, let's not give Andreas any ideas, eh? Brigitte has been spending a lot of time at her mother's house lately. Agnes is glad to have her home, and Lucky's, all, is all, Lucky's always treated her like a daughter. But I can tell they're concerned. Are Brigitte and Martin having trouble, Veronica? Veronica, that's one word for it. Brigitte does what she can, but nothing pleases Martin. He won't lift a finger for her or Wolf. He's such an asshole. Johan, well that's not his business, is it? Woman's work and all that. Veronica, you ever seen him doing much men's work, Dad? Johan, can't say I've ever seen him do much work at all. Clara, perhaps Lucky can talk some sense into Martin. He's always been a devoted husband and father. Cat, Lucky Steinauer is the model of what a man should be. So Johan likes Lucky. <laughs> Best we keep our, you know, opinion of our relationship with Lucky to ourselves. Otto. Otto. Is everyone behaving themselves in here? Veronica. Oh, it's you. Eddie. Afternoon, Otto. Come to see anyone special. Eva. Hello, Otto. It's good to see you. Otto. I heard laughing from the road and knew you all had to be up to no good in here. And look. There's Andreas. Are you even minding your manners? Old Johan here is a real stickler for propriety. Andreas, I fear I've been yoked to the wheel of propriety my entire life, or I've been mostly listening, actually. Otto, right. What was I thinking? You're probably going to take everything you hear to the abbot. Johan, as if the abbot cares what the common people think. Hmm. Andreas, we could say the abbot's really not so bad, or the abbot's preoccupied with the world to come, not this one. Let's not disrespect the abbot. Out of easy for you to say, considering you're not subjecting you're not subject to his whims. Listen, you're a fine enough man, Andreas, but you're hardly unbiased. Johan, too much time listening to hymns, not enough time working, that's your problem. No wonder you're not married, Andreas. Otto, we all know you work hard in the fields, Johan. No need to boast. Eddie, he works hard in other places, too. Veronica, Mom! Eddie, you've been in town a few months, Andreas. Got any burning questions you've been meaning to ask? Andreas, about Kearsaw Abbey. About Baron Rothfagel. About Tassing. About Baron Rothfagel. I heard Baron Rothfagel was involved in a tragic affair in Tassing. Cat. Ah, it's a very sad story. Clara. One that's not entirely appropriate to discuss, even here. Eva. Oh, just tell him. He knows enough. Otto. He should know the truth about his friend, the Baron. Anyway. Say nothing. You could say, yes, I'd like to know. We weren't really friends, or say nothing. I'd say nothing. Otto. Did you think he was an angel in addition to a wealthy man? Clara. The grave belongs to Lucky and Agnes's first daughter. Beat and her unborn child. You could say, why are they buried out in the middle of the forest, or she took her own life? Cap, it's not quite that simple. Clara, she had an affair with the Baron and fell pregnant. Oh my god. Cap, that man promised her the moon and the stars. Clara, when her pregnancy was discovered, the Baron abandoned her. Otto, the heartless bastard. Hedy, it's her fault, isn't it? She should have known better. Veronica, what is wrong with you? Hedy, Veronica Barin. Johan, girls, you're causing a scene. Clara. Beat asked her mother for help with restoring her cycle. She refused. 
Agnes and Lucky told her that they would find someone for her to marry, that everything would be all right. We don't know if Beat was scared or well, she took matters into her own hands. It ended with her death. Andreas, did she not think of her immortal soul? Suicides are bound for hell. Or I saw Lucky praying beside her grave. Well, the, none of these options are good, but we don't want to talk about Lucky praying in her grave. No, Clara, no, you misunderstand. Beat took herbs to restore her bleeding. That's what killed her. It was an accident. Oh my god, and we can pause for a second. The herbs must have come from Dr. Stoltz, maybe. Who knows? Well, I could be wrong about that. Hedy, well, I don't know about that. Father Thomas didn't agree. Eva, it was... Obviously an accident. Bette was a sweet and happy girl. She would never kill her son. Andres, I saw Lucky praying beside her grave. Lucky and Agnes both took it badly. Agnes blamed herself. Cat, Lucky blamed the Baron. Eva, it's not hard to understand why. Beat was just a girl. The Baron took advantage of her. Andreas, I would explain why Lucky and Lorenz argued when Lorenz returned to task. Otto, sure. I can see the wheels turning in your head. Andreas, you should please leave well enough be. Johan, agreed. I don't like where this conversation is going. Hedy, come on, Andreas. Surely you've got better questions than that. Andreas, about Kearsaw Abbey or about Tassig? We'll ask about the Abbey. Clara mentioned the abbot has suddenly started raising taxes. Clara, raising them and changing their terms, yes. When Father Matthias was the abbot, he would not He would let us pay a portion of our taxes in crops. Otto, naturally, the ship from Brain's abbot put an end to that this year. Eva, even if our crops fail or produce less than we'd like, we still owe the abbot the abbey for the use of the land. Otto, it doesn't make any sense. How can he raise our taxes when the price for our grain does not rise too? Where does he think the money comes from? Otto, he does think about the common folk at all. He doesn't think about the common folk at all. It's not his abbey. It's not his problem. Andreas, you could say, what about the miller? Doesn't he have some part to play in that? But isn't that his problem? He's the abbot, not the mayor. Or you could negotiate a better price on the, your grain with the miller. And that's where we'll go ahead and end the video there for this week. And so with that, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Like to be with you all. Take care, and thanks again.